gracious good day to one and all once again, tis I, Norton the first by grace of God, Emperor of the United States and protector of Mexico. Back with you once again for episode number 126 of Emperor Norton's fantastic history vlog. Today is August 26, 2020. It is our 162nd day under COVID-19 restrictions. Well, let's get right into it, shall we? Let's begin with our national days. It is National Dog Day. So pet your dog, take your dog for a walk, give your dog a treat. It is also National Cherry Popsicle Day. I don't think that's one of our favorites, but for those of you who like that, have one. And also it is Women's Equality Day. We'll get to why a little bit later on. Our Florida man story for today. But, uh, let's see here. Florida man claiming to be God arrested after touching people, fighting with police, being tased. There you go. Our San Francisco story actually didn't occur today, but uh, we feel it is significant. And this was brought to our attention yesterday by Mike Cohen, one of our most loyal viewers. Thank you, Mike, for letting us know about this because uh, it was on August 24th that it was reported that Kobe Yee, iconic exotic dancer and owner of Forbidden City, dies at 93. At the stroke of midnight on any, oh, I forgot to mention that this is written by Sam Whiting. It is the Chronicle obituary for Yee. Okay, here we go. At the stroke of midnight on any Saturday night in the 1950s in San Francisco, the most exciting place you could be was Forbidden City, when Miss Kobe Yee came out to do her floor show. Dressed in a flimsy gown slid up the sides, Yee performed her dance to a live music in a style that would be described as just short of a strip tease. As the featured performer, Yee was billed as China's most daring dancing doll, but Forbidden City was not sleazy. It was, a glamorous, it was glamorous enough to attract Belgium's bachelor king, Baudouin, pardon me if I mispronounced that, who came to see Yee's act in 1959, an appearance that made Time magazine. But Yee was more than an exotic dancer. She was also a business person, the last owner and host of Forbidden City, the last and most famous of the Chinatown nightclubs. Yi died on August 14, one night before she was to receive the honor of Legend of the Year from the Burlesque Hall of Fame Museum in Las Vegas. She died in an East Bay hospital of natural causes, according to her daughter. She was 93. Kobe represents a lost time of beautiful, long-legged women with dark lips and pompadoured hair dancing like angels, said Trina Robbins, author of Forbidden City, the Golden Age of Chinese Nightclubs, an excellent book, by the way, which came out in 2010. Everyone came to see Kobe dance. Yi was born November 2nd, 1926 in Columbus, Ohio, where she grew up, the daughter of immigrants from Canton, China. According to her daughter, the family had decided to return to China and came to San Francisco to catch a ship at the end of World War II. When they got to the dock, Yi and her older sister Fawn informed their parents they were not going on the ship. That began her life in San Francisco. The sisters got a room at the YMCA, YWCA, pardon me, and Yi found the best job available, which was dancing. She had tap lessons as a child in Ohio, and those were qualifications enough. At the peak of the era, in the late 1940s and early 1950s, there were six nightclubs along Grant Avenue in Chinatown. And they all looked like the set of a Fred Astaire movie, said Robbins. People would get dressed up and come to these clubs to dance just like in the movies. The Lion's Den, Club Shanghai, Club Man Mandalay, the Chinese Sky Room, Kublai Khan, and Club Shangri-La were notable clubs. Yi danced at most of them, at one of her prior stops, she fell in love with a singer named Sun Lo. What was a flirtation became more than that during a group tour of Chinatown entertainers in Honolulu, 
They were married at the Club Blue Lay in 1949. The marriage lasted just long enough for their daughter to be born. She and her mother settled into a house on Union Street while Yi also settled in at Forbidden City. Set off by herself, by itself, near the corner of Sutter and Stockton Streets, in a space now occupied by the uh, clothier Wilkes Bashford, was Forbidden City, the biggest and most famous of the clubs. Opened by Charlie Lowe in 1937, it occupied the buildings upstairs and served traditional Chinese food before the floor shows started. There were three 45-minute shows per night at 9 p.m., 10.30, and midnight, with a fresh audience of maybe 100 admitted for each. The room was lit by lanterns with a five-person band, drum, sax, trumpet, piano, and stand-up bass on a riser in tuxedos. Well, not the bass, the musicians. The show was introduced by an MC who told bawdy jokes. Then came, out came six chorus girls, a vocalist, an acrobat, jumping through a ring of fire, a tap dancer, and finally the lights would go down as Yi took the floor. The show changed every six weeks. According to an item in Herb Cain's column, when King Baudouin came to see the act, Yi turned to the nightclub owner and said, Shall I censor the act? The show, uh, Lowe replied, hell no, let her rip. Still, she came out and bowed before him, earning a wave in response from the Bachelor King. She always brought the house down, said Cynthia Yee, who danced in the Dorothy Toy Show. She had a great personality on stage and was full of energy. Yee had so much energy, in fact, that in addition to dancing three sets a night, she was brought to she bought the place from Lowe in 1960. Thereafter, it was called Kobe Yee's Forbidden City until it closed in 1970. According to Cynthia Yee, the Chinatown nightclubs had been so popular that Grey Line Tours would drop as many as five busloads for a show. But the demand started to die at the same moment Carol Dota's topless act hit the Condor Club on Broadway. The dancers at Kobe Yee's Forbidden City did not go topless and never would, even though it killed the business, Cynthia Yee said. One by one, the clubs fell and the dancers retired, only to be unretired, by the Grant Avenue Follies in 2004. Twelve senior performers, a singer, a magician, a poet, nine dancers put on traditional floor shows at Clarion Performing Arts Center in Chinatown and hit the road to perform at festivals and for veterans groups. In fact, we saw them at an anniversary banquet for the San Francisco History Association. I guess that would have been about eight or nine years ago. They were wonderful. The main attraction was still Kobe Yee whenever the Grand Avenue Follies went, wherever the Grand Avenue Follies went, and that included Shanghai last September. Yi made her own costumes out of silk, wore plenty of layers to take off as she danced. She'd combine her solo act with a ballroom dance with partner Stephen King, not the writer. Her last performance was at the Rockbund Art Museum last September at the age of 92. She was still full of energy, said Cynthia Yee. She was ready to go disco dancing after the show. What a wonderful obituary, isn't it? And do read Forbidden City. It's uh, just a very fascinating story. A lot of people don't know about the nightclubs in Chinatown. And I didn't know that it was at the Wilkes-Bashford location. That building needs a plaque commemorating that's where Forbidden City was indeed. Well, let's move on to our other history for today. 1498, Michelangelo is commissioned to carve the Pietà. 1846, W.A. Bartlett is appointed the first mayor, Alcade actually, of Yerba Buena, which would go on to become San Francisco. 1883, Krakatoa erupts with increasingly large explosions, which ultimately kill 36,000. By the way, Krakatoa is west of Java, not east of Java. I don't know how that got started. 1919, uh, Tennessee, on August 18, 1920, Wait, this is screwed up. On August 19, 18, 1920, Tennessee became the 36th state to ratify the uh, 19th Amendment 
giving three-fourths majority of state ratification necessary to give women the vote make it the law of the land. The package containing the certified record of the action of the Tennessee legislature was sent by train to the nation's capital, arriving in the early hours of August 26th today, which is why it's Women's Equality Day. Did I get that right? Let me just make sure I got that right. Oops, two pages back. Let me make sure I'm getting this right. Do, 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 do. Yes, Women's Equality Day. Where was I? At 8 a.m. that morning, Secretary of State Bainbridge Colby signed it without ceremony at his residence in Washington. None of the leaders of the women's suffrage movement were present when the proclamation was signed, and no photographers or film cameras recorded the event. Moving on. On this date in 1952, fluoridation of San Francisco water began. 1959, the British Motor Corporation introduces the Morris Mini Minor, one of the great tiny cars. This date in 2003, the Columbia Accident Investigation Board releases its final reports on the Space Shuttle Columbia disaster. Another thank you to Mike Cohen for letting us know that yesterday we missed the birth date in 1970 of Wilco frontman Jeff Tweedy. But moving on to our births for today, 1845, Mary Ann Nichols, a victim of Jack the Ripper. 1898, Peggy Guggenheim, American art patron and collector, Guggenheim Museum, well, Solomon, I believe that was her husband. 1899, Rufino Tomeo, Mexican painter of renown. 1904, the great, great writer, Christopher Isherwood. 1906, Albert Sabin, Polish-American physician who invented the oral polio vaccine. 1910, Mother Teresa is, was born. 1921, Ben Bradley, American editor, journalist, executive editor of the Washington Post during the Watergate year. If it had not been for him, uh, those stories would not have come to light. So we owe him a great debt. I believe he got the Presidential Medal of Freedom for uh, his great work. 1921, Naomi Parker Frawley, the American uh, who inspired Rosie the Riveter poster, the Rosie the Riveter poster. Not 1949, Bob Cowsill, the leader of the band, the Cowsills. And 1981, Macaulay Culkin. Our deaths today, we left one off yesterday, and that's our fault. Nobody pointed it out, we just skipped over it. And that would be the uh, philosopher... Frederick Nietzsche. And you know, there's nothing Nietzsche couldn't teach you about the raisin of the wrist. 1937, Andrew Mellon, American banker, Mellon Bank, industrialist and secretary of the treasury. I didn't, need the, I didn't know they needed a bank just for Mellons, but there you go. 1974, Charles Lindbergh, the American aviator, who was the first to fly solo across the Atlantic. 1980, Tex Avery, cartoonist. Uh, if you're a fan of the old Warner Brothers, the old MGM, I believe he even worked at Universal Cartoons, he was one of the best of them all. And he had a hand in creating or created Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, Porky Pig, Elmer Fudd, Droopy Dog, Screwy Squirrel, George and Junior, and Chilly Willie. 1981, Roger Nash Baldwin, founder of the American Civil Liberties Union. 1986, the actor Ted Knight, you might remember him as uh, Ted Baxter on the Mary Tyler Moore Show, but a little known fact about that character, he was kind of a cross between, oops, sorry, hit the microphone, a cross between two Los Angeles newscasters, George Putnam, and it is this reporter's opinion, and Jerry Dumphy, from the desert to the sea to all of Southern California, a good evening. Check it out. 1989, writer Irving Stone. 1995, Evelyn Woods, speed reading guru. Or rather, 1995, Evelyn Woods, speed reading guru. 2009, Dominic Dunn, American writer and producer. 2018, one of the giants of Broadway, Neil Simon. I found a nice quote for today that I thought I would read at the end. That may become a regular thing. One of the sources we use always has a quote of the day, but I don't know who wrote it. If you do know, 
Leave your comments down below. When you're smart, you're wait, let me start again. Sorry. You're smart when you only believe half of what you hear. Wise is when you know which half to believe. Well, that wraps it up for today. Now, don't forget, we are accepting tips. So here's the information for that. You can do a monthly subscription through Patreon or do a one-time donation via PayPal. We greatly appreciate all of our wonderful and generous donors. We could not do this without you, especially with uh, Congress not taking action on unemployment benefits. Hello, people are hurting out here. Get to work. Uh, we may have to order them back. Also, here's uh, the website for more information about what the Countess and I normally do when we were able to do our tours. However, it is also a wonderful compendium of information, each website. If you go to sftimemachine.com, you'll see a, a box to click on for more information. That takes you to the individual websites for Amber Norton's Fantastic San Francisco Time Machine, Drag Me Along Tours, San Francisco Food Safari. On those individual websites, you'll find a lot of historical information. Uh, we put a lot of links on there, so check those out. And if you like some recipes, check out the vlog, the very blog, rather, on SF Food Safari. Some of our recipes are on there, and they're good recipes. Uh, until we see you again, stay safe. Stay inside, stay healthy. If you do go outside, please, please, please wear a mask. It's the simplest and best thing you can do to prevent the transmission of disease and save lives. Do not take unproven cures that might kill you. You would think it would go without saying, but one must say it. And be kind to one another. We would really like to see more kindness in this world. So until we see you again, a gracious good day.